downtown Indianapolis on an absolutely gorgeous Thursday evening. The weather outside, frankly, inconsequential to where we are tonight. We're at the Bonner Center, part of the Super Bowl legacy program, remarkably from over a decade ago. And this has now been the home for each of the last four years for the City League, frankly, for the entire season. But for championship night on the ISC Sports Network, it is ladies first. It is the Catch the Stars Foundation supported team. Of course, that's the charitable arm of what Tamika Catchings has done for this town for the better part of 20 years against the Horizon League. They were the runners up in this game a season ago. My name is Greg Reichstraw, joined by former Cathedral Irish player, both in football and basketball, and Jared Thomas. Jared, it's good to have you back from your UFL season. Looking forward to having you for a variety of broadcasts for us on ISC for football and basketball. It is your first time here, but I know you know a lot of the participants in these championship games. I'm just wild at the outcome of what happened back in 2013. And you fast forward to today, you see all of the neighborhood come out. You see the buzz as we came on with the intro. It's just all surrounded with basketball, community, and neighborhood. And what better way in the state of Indiana than to do it on the hardwood? I look up at our slash camera up above again. This is a tight facility, uh, both in terms of the atmosphere and the room around it, which means it is a tremendously packed environment that we'll have for each of these championship games. Again, some very familiar names, the Goss sisters from Ben Davis, Bria and Diera, Maddie McConnell, a part of that Horizon League team as well. For the Catch the Stars Foundation, Portia Green, who has been a mainstay of this league for the four years they have had a women's division. Mariah King, Kim Roberson, Michelle Roberson, Bree Arnold amongst those playing. Who are you looking forward to the most, if not from a player, just from a kind of an element standpoint from this championship game? As I was getting ready for the game, it's like I couldn't just stop in the rabbit hole of research <laughs> trying to read all of the accomplishments of all of these great players that are out here today. And honestly, I was more impressed with the women than I were the men. So uh, to say one player, uh, potentially Bria Goss, probably because her note section for me was the biggest, but I think her story is the boldest with all of the adversity that she's fought and being able to come back on the court in such a profound way. So I'm really excited to see her for the first time up close and personal. Bria rocking her Ben Davis shorts uh, in terms of playing course she played the University of Kentucky played briefly in WNBA has played overseas as well a chance to catch up her sister Deara before tonight's contest as well you see Maddie McConnell rocking the number 34 for the Horizon League she works in the Horizon League office on a full-time basis and she is part of the board of directors here of the City League we will play two 20-minute halves it is largely running clock early in the contest we will also play to an Elam ending once we get to that final stoppage in the second half, whoever is in front, the Elam ending target score gets nine added to it, and that is what we are playing to. It is also, we are playing for $6,000 in this women's championship game, $8,000 in the men's championship game. Was there a cut in there for us broadcasters? A very small percentage. <laughs> goes back to us. Noting the ending on the game, obviously competitors out here first and foremost, but anytime you put financials and money on the table, that ante gets risen by the end of the contest when it when it's time to go win. And you notice that we paused for a moment because clock turned off for us for just a second. Chris Fuller, one of our lead officials for tonight's contest. Indiana Sports Corporation, one of the Presenting sponsors that we'll thank during the course of the show. Yamaya Morris will jump at center for the Horizon League. And at six foot six, the former Mountaineer from West Virginia, as well as Mississippi State Bulldog, wins the tap. Goss's shot is blocked. It'll be out of bounds to Horizon League. And as you see, the clock will largely roll. So even though they're 20 minute halves, these games seem to fly by very quickly. A lot about an hour 15 for these championship games to take place. Baseline jump shot is good for Morris. It's no secret that Yamaya is definitely taller than everyone, so easier to get going. Jump shot at the other end. Bucket is good. That is a three. And it's Roberson that knocks that down. Knocked away from Kendall Fisher. Played at Tinley High School. Finished her college days at Lawrence Tech at the NAI level. 
On the drive, basket is good. Back-to-back so -back buckets for the Catch the Stars Foundation. That is Mariah King, who is a current coach for Brady Sally at Ball State. In other words, she could still practice if need be <laughs> for a very good Cardinal program. Ball tipped away and taken away by Catch the Stars. Turning down the three, taking the two, back-to-back -back buckets for Mariah King. There aren't too many coaches like Mariah that would actually be willing to get on the court and compete in this type of setting, so huge kudos to Mariah. When in doubt, go high, not a bad play. Rebound by Kim Roberson. She is tied up, and the arrow will keep it here. Love the slip on this ball. That's exactly what she did at Eastern Illinois as a player. Even when she went overseas, she dominated the paint. Constantly attacking on the boards, cleaning up with rebounds. Shot clock at 22. Yes, we are playing a shot clock in tonight's game. And it will be a jump ball, no possession arrow here. Fisher will track it down for the Horizon League. Average 16 points a game in her final season in 23 at Lawrence Tech. Goss creates some space and scores. De'Ara Goss gets the bucket. The Goss sisters playing in the backcourt together goes all the way back to childhood and even at Ben Davis. That chemistry is just automatically there. It almost feels like it's unfair. Had a chance to hang with the Goss sisters and other members of those Ben Davis great teams last year at the Indiana State Fair as they were honored. One of the great teams in the history of Indiana High School Hoops. 81 straight victories for that 2009-2010 Ben Davis Lady Giants. First try to put back, does not go. Second try is good for Morris. It's her second field goal. When everyone only comes up to your shoulders. <laughs> That's right. Just one slap. It's usually conducive for you getting to the free throw line and as we see Yamaya getting to it early in the game, getting to the free throw line, getting some easy finishes around the bucket. Connects on the and one opportunity. Of course, maybe our fans have been able to see a little more basketball over the course of this summer than per usual with the Olympic Games taking place as we speak. Last chance a lot of these players to play for quite some time with the school year about to resume. Of course, the high school and younger level it already has in most places. Shot clock at five on the drive. Runner, and again, that shot altered by the 6'6", Morris. Here's Bria Gauntz. Turns, shoots, and scores. Bria gets her first basket. Great transition defense by Yamaya. Get it out to Bria. She finishes with a nice turnaround jump shot. Early 10-7 lead for the Horizon League. Ball kicks, yep, we'll keep it right here. I couldn't even believe that this game started as an open gym. <laughs> That's right. This originally was an open gym, and it slowly but surely turned into a competitive tournament. And I, as I've already said, once you start seeing competition come out from some of the best players that we've seen in Indianapolis, it's always going to be a great performance. Well, I had a chance to catch up with Austin Taylor, the founder of the City League, earlier today on 93.5 and 107.5, the fan. And, and this is the fourth year for the Women's League. And obviously in a place like Indianapolis where there is such great talent both in men's and women's basketball, once the Men's League got established, it was time to do the same for the ladies' side. And, it's maybe one of the best kind of amateur summer leagues in the country for women's basketball. Shot blocked again. McConnell could not track it down, but De'Ara Goss does just that. Again, when in doubt, throw it to the square. Morris will go get it. She's got seven of the opening 12 for the Horizon League. They have scored the last 10 points. Well, what I love the most about Yamaya, but then just this venue, the purpose of this, you go on the City League website, and they paint out the definition of a league. And it's a group of people all coming together for a common purpose. And this is the outcome. That common purpose being basketball and just the love of it. Trailer three for Goss does not go. And the rebound collected by Catch the Stars. This is Bree Arnold. She too played at Ben Davis. 
Trailer three does not go for King. And the rebound goes to De'Ara Goss. Shot clock at 16. Music playing in the background, part of the atmosphere of the league. Goss, the drive, does not go, but Bria Goss will shoot two. A consistent theme we've saw this far in the game. If you need an easy bucket, throw it up to Yamaya. If you want something else, just put the ball in Bria's hands. Goss to shoot two. Love that elevated look from that end of the floor from the Bonner Fitness Center. Thank our friends at CareSource, founded in 1989 as a nonprofit managed health care plan, now provides public health care solutions, including Medicaid, Medicare, and Marketplace. CareSource invests in initiatives and organizations that make a lasting difference in the lives of its members and communities by improving their health and well-being. Goss makes the first of two. Our fifth year of doing the City League Finals on ISC. Fourth year as a men's and women's doubleheader. One dribble to fire. That does not go. And again, Goss collects the rebound. She played at IUPUI, did the era. Bria, the former Kentucky Wildcat, lays it up and in. Goss sisters have combined for eight of the 16 and make it 14 unanswered points for the Horizon League. Say what you want, but the Horizon League team is here to win. As we can see, the, the ferocious attack to the paint, the suffocating defense, even though they give up a three there. But the intensity is there from both teams, which is what you want to see in any environment, but it's specifically one like this where there's so much good things going on around the City League. Second made three for Portia Green, answered by De'Ara Goss at the other end. First, second field goal. Green goes right back at you. I see a trend developing here, boss. <laughs> it's the trend that we've all seen in basketball. More three-pointers, less two-pointers. Everybody's doing their Steph Curry from today who made nine in the Olympic semifinals. Fisher tries to answer, cannot make it. And the a rebound corralled by Arnold. A Steph Curry that didn't really have to do much in pool play, even in exhibition play, but showed up in a major way for the United States he had today. He to do everything in Serbia today. <laughs> U.S. down by 15 late in that game and found a way to win. Bank not open yet. Haven't seen much of a fast break opportunity. Here's one, Goss. Swatted down by her fellow Ben Davis giant. Porsche says, ah, I'll go for the three. Knew she missed it immediately. And then De'Ara Goss with the rebound. And contact there, blocking foul will be called. And we'll see a pair of free throws coming up. Foul whistled against the Catch the Stars Foundation. And then we have a line change of subs for both of these teams. They're going to say that was a pre-shot foul. So no free throws just yet. Already halfway through this opening half. Like I said, this running clock, it tends to fly. Goss. She'll get fouls on that one. Free throws here. As Bria Goss got the defender in the air, and she's already made two. She'll go back to the line for two more. Marissa Johnson played at Purdue Poly High School. Whistled for the foul. Let's thank our friends at the Indiana Sports Corp, a not-for-profit organization founded in 1979 as the nation's first sports commission. ISC exists to create positive impact by hosting world-class sporting events which drive economic vitality, facilitate a vibrant community with civic pride, garner national and international media attention, and create opportunities for our youth. Of course, it was announced that Indiana Sports Corp, a big part of the doubleheader now these days, played at Gamebridge Fieldhouse. Purdue and Texas A&M, Butler and Wisconsin on December the 14th. Steal by the Horizon League. They get the ball in an eight-point lead, and then a bump will be called. Again, pre-shot, should be on the floor. Ah. 
It feels we have the best chicken. seat in the house. We do. Now, it's, it's sometimes interrupted people walking in their actual <laughs> seats. But you're never more than three rows away from the action here at the Bonner Center. Our corner tends to be kind of Grand Central Station. Katie Ernstberger checks back in for the Catch the Stars Foundation squad. And a foul will be called as Irene Williams, former Ben Davis Giant, is fouled. Now, Reese spent some time at Wabash Valley after her time at Ben Davis. A lot of Ben Davis Giants on the court today. Given just, their basketball lineage, that's not surprising. Just something about what's brewing over on the west side for so many years. Or Stan Benj once again, the head coach at Ben Davis. Goss, the step through, left it short. Good move by Dierdes, could not finish. Wing three does not go. Maria Goss takes the bump, gets the rebound, and drives past Ernstberger, the former Marion Knight. Good double here by Catch the Stars. The drive by De'Ara Goss is good. She's got seven. The Gosses have 15, and Horizon League now with a double-digit advantage. It's no secret what the game plan is for the Horizon League with the lack of size for Catch the Stars. I see the game plan just being simple. Put your head down, get to the bucket, and we see where it's gotten so far. Trailer three does not go. Tight for the weak side glass, and it'll be out of bounds to believe the Horizon League. Jesse Key set the check back in for the Catch the Stars Foundation. Maddie McConnell returns as Morris will take a bit of a breather, so uh, a little bit less of a size advantage now for the Horizon League. Goss for three and missed most of everything did Bree on that one. Already 13 minutes by in this women's championship game. Men's game slated for an 8 o'clock tip off. That's going to be a foul against the Horizon League. Victoria Lipscomb. Victoria's full-time gig, and this is the case for a lot of former athletes that are in the Indianapolis area. <laughs> she works for the NCAA. First, the Horizon League, based here in Indianapolis. Kelly Ford from the league office here to check out all the action tonight. With his co-worker, Matt McConnell, and their sponsored team. Key for three, no. Shot clock was going off, and you know why that one went up. McConnell's runner does not go. And the rebound corral. By catch the stars, good slip. Key off the window, got it. Jesse Key, who played at Kentucky State, the Thoroughbreds, the Division II level, and in Frankfort, Kentucky. What a find from Michelle Roberson in transition. Able to just quasi pull the dribble out get the defender to take up that real estate and drops it off to Key. And a foul going to be called, a blocking foul against Catch the Stars. They'll bring their big back in in Morris. Well, the first few possessions belong to Catch the Stars, but the basket you see on the replay there, that's one of the few easy looks they frankly have had since the first two or three trips down the floor. And we have hit the penalty portion of the game from a free throw standpoint. So Victoria Lipscomb will get a look from the line. Fitness Zone Indy is a program of the John Bonner Neighborhood Center. This is a low-cost, state-of-the-art fitness center located in the historic Arsenal Tech High School campus. We're here watching this game right here on the near east side of Indianapolis. It's a missed opportunity. Possession will continue here for the Horizon League. Horizon League, of course, 11 member, Division I conference. Almost approaching 50 years of the Horizon League at this point. IU Indy, Purdue Fort Wayne, and of course, Indiana based members of the league. Rebound pulled down by Catch the Star. This is Portia Green, runner, and she got fouled. Portia will get two shots.
It's the banter in between whistles or <laughs> back and forth through transition. Everyone getting feisty out on the court. You drive to the basket, stare someone down. You even go to the free throw line when the lights go out. Yeah, let's uh, wait until the lights get kicked back on. I think somebody may have inadvertently hit a switch. There we go. So we got him crowded to the walls already where people are inadvertently hitting wall switches at this point. <laughs> No problem for Porsche. I vividly remember in my days of traveling with then IUPUI, now IU Indy. Jaguars won at Georgia Tech one year. And the lights went off twice during that game. And we were all kind of thinking, I don't think the Yellow Jackets care much for IUPUI winning <laughs> this game. And the lights suddenly flicker twice. Not the old Alexander Coliseum. I was playing an IFL arena game for the Mass Pirates against the Spokane Shock. And we were putting it to them pretty good and all of a sudden the lights went out and you would have thought it was a concert in the Pacific Northwest because we started dancing and singing with the fans and then they slowly crept back into the game once the lights came back on. So <laughs> it was fun while it lasted. You and I could share some serious road stories at this point, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. Bria Goss gets fouled and now she will go to the free throw line. There'll be a five minute halftime intermission Conclusion of these 20 minutes. So again, the action is always going. Rhea now with nine. She has made her last five points from the line. Michelle Roberson, who played at Weber State. Was there at the same time as Damian Lillard. And she went to such a great high school. The Cathedral. The Cathedral Irish over which, on the east side of town, her is, and her sister. Which is now internationally known <laughs> yes, with Cole Hawker winning the 1,500 meters earlier this week. Three contested left short. Good job by Bria Goss to rebound down and track it down. Diarra will take the long shot and stick it. The era played for Austin Parkinson at IUPUI. She's got 10. There's Austin these days, the head coach at Butler University, and today, in fact, is Coach Parkinson's birthday. The era leading the Jags to two WNITs, first in team history, one of those two years. Just a heads up basketball player. Bree Arnold off the rebound from Green, misses everything, but. Portia gets it again, and then she got fouled. Late whistle with the right one. Portia Green will get two as Morris commits the foul. And just unable to kind of get that easy offense at this point on a regular basis would be the Catch the Stars team. So as Portia shoots two, let's thank our friends at USA First Financial. If you want to give your 18-year-old a $5,000 birthday gift, First, deposit $200 in an investment account at birth. Two, deposit $100 into the account every birthday until they turn 18. You get a 9% annual return. Your investment gets you $5,074. Learn more at usafirstfinancial.com. Goss, the drive and take. Bree has got a dozen to lead all scores. It's no secret. The head of the snake, Bria Goss, just taking everything and taking matters into her own hands, leading the charge for this offensive attack. And we have had former WNBA players in this league before. The Goss sisters light it up. Bree's got 12. The era's got a Baker's dozen. They've combined for 25 points. And it's no secret, an hour before the game, both of the Goss sisters out here getting shots up, and we seeing the fruits of their labor. 15-point lead in this first half. Yeah, they are fired up. I, they felt last year they would have made the championship game and not some injuries and scheduling conflicts taking place. Again, quick restart because the time on the clock, Portia Green realizes it, sticks the baseline jumper. She's got 11, so the bucket is good, but it is still a 13-point deficit for the Catch the Stars Foundation squad trailing the Horizon League. We'll take this quick timeout. Halftime show comes your way next as you're watching the City League Women's Championship game right here on the ISC Sports Network.
your life is on the go, now your viewing habits can be on the go. With the ISC Sports Network app, your team is at your fingertips. You can download years worth of content from the ISC Sports Network library, high school, college, special events, weekly and monthly shows, wherever you find your favorite app. And you can always find out more information at ISC Sports Network. Back inside the Bonner Center. Again, halftime already underway here on the Women's Championship game. And as the Horizon League leading the Catch the Stars Foundation 33-20. We have been accustomed to seeing Amber Harris in this championship game. And then we see her on the sidelines at North Central High School for most of the games that we do. She's kind enough to join us now at halftime. Amber, it is always good to see you. How's your summer been? It's been great. It's been great. Uh, long summer coaching. So, I mean, back for the City League, it's been great. All right, what has this? What has the City League meant to you as you have still had a chance to play after your days in the WNBA, after your days in China? What has this league meant to you? I mean, it, it's mean a lot. You know, you can come back to the city and, you know, showcase your talent and what you've done over the years and just, you know, do it in front of your home crowd. You know what I'm saying? So it's always good to have some type of outlet to come back to. The City League is definitely that. I know that when I ask what's new at North Central, the answer is always construction. Uh, <laughs> oh, man, they are building it up over there. Uh, and, and our cameras will be there to show off the new football stadium coming up in about a month on, on ISC. From a basketball standpoint, what's new at North Central these uh, days? They actually, we are actually getting a new, a new floor as well. So um, there's a lot going on. we got a new field house. Um, uh, for Paul Logan to, to represent his foundation and, and all those good things. So, you know, there's a lot going on over there. So after your playing career, why come back to your community and give back the way that you have? I mean, you, you see so many other athletes of your stature. They go out, they get theirs, and then they go somewhere else, and they kind of seclude themselves from the community that they grew up in. Yeah. Why I is mean, that different for you? I mean, it's, it's always good to come back because the youth are watching, you know. So, you know, coming back and bringing back, you know, some some type of joy to the game, so the kids that can see that and see where, you know, where you've been, that's something that they can accomplish as well. So, you know, just bringing this, you know, bringing it back to the community. That's all it is. It's all that's what it's all about. So, with the youth watching, obviously you and the rest of this game, we see Horizon has gotten out to a crazy lead in this first half. Yeah. Any second half predictions? Um. You know, Horizon, they're, they're moving the ball. They're, they're sharing. The golf sisters are playing out, out their mind right now. So um, I think speed is, you know, is what's helping them right now. Uh, so, you know, if they keep it up, they, they'll, they'll get one of these. <laughs> <laughs> Which you've been a part of that. Right. Uh, winning the first two back in 21 as well as in 2022. Mm -hmm. Amber, we'll let you go enjoy the second half. Thanks for the time. Always good to see you. Appreciate you. Amber Harris, again, simply put, one of the best women's bass players that this city has ever produced. We'll take this quick time out. Second half action comes your way next. Horizon League leads by 13 right here on ISC. Thank you. And into the back of the net. A little fireworks in the first half. Throw it up for Tillman. Whoa. My goodness. 122 6 0 for Penn. Oh, what a swim. Six. Six of them. That court side is again, this crowd is continuing to pour in. Hopefully the fire marshal likes us uh, on this Thursday night. Uh, it is always a great atmosphere. It's always a packed house. And this is just the first of two on ISC, the men's championship approximately at 8 o'clock. 33-20, Horizon League leads the Catch the Stars Foundation. Greg Rakestraw, Jared Thomas. Jared, your thoughts when we saw in half number one. I couldn't help but think that we were over on the west side as much as the Goss sisters has been dominating their performances today so far in this game. But then also, obviously, have to share the wealth 
and give a huge shout out to Portia Green leading the charge as we saw the timely bucket on the baseline right before the half. So maybe that's uh, some momentum that her catch the stars needed going into the second half. All points for her eyes link come from three players. Morris with seven. The Gosses have combined for 26. Diera with 14. Bria Goss with a dozen. And for Diera, she has primarily gotten it done from three-point range, four made threes in the first half. That's called a seasoned veteran. As an older sister in this scenario, she said, Bria, you take care of the paint, and I'll take care of the perimeter. On the Catch the Stars side of things, 11 for Portia Green, four for Mariah King, three for Kim Roberson, two for Jesse Key. You see the huddle right now. What's what's the possible switch in the game plan on the ladies' side here for Catch the Stars? Catch the Stars has to find a way to get into the paint. Because of the suffocating defense of the Horizon League, it just forced their offense to start so far out. So if they can find a way to penetrate, get a secondary score other than Portia Green, I think we'll have ourselves a game. So 20 minutes on the clock. Again, we will have the Elam ending at the end of this. Once we get to a certain point of the game, we'll stop the clock. Whatever the team that is in front will add nine to that score, and that will be what will dictate the champion of the City League, the Queens of the Court for the fourth play of this event. And, Jared, you do have to give up those two trophies just to your right, just so you know. I you, thought I was taking them home with me. You can sit there and be the guardian <laughs> during the game, but one of them is getting lifted in about 20 minutes, just so you know. Let's catch the stars in the white uniform tops. It's Horizon League in the primarily black gear. Bree Arnold will bring the ball the length of the floor and we'll find Portia Green, and we are underway for half number two. Play a shot clock in these games. Steal by De'Ara Goss, but could not keep it in the court of play. And you'll get the bird's eye look. May have been called for a travel. Yep, it wasn't she was out of bounds. It was Chris Fuller saying, nah, too many steps. But those two steps would have been good in these some of these preseason games that you're gearing up to call. So maybe she was just practicing her best toe tap impersonation. Well. Chris knows what he's doing as a, as a referee in both football and basketball. He and I were on the way in saying, I'll see you in two weeks. He'll be the lead referee for Lawrence Central and Lawrence North. Bree Arnold got the bucket to go. Her first basket of the game. So 33-22 make it 36-22 as Kendall Fisher gets the three to go. 18-48 left to go in this one. Everyone always notes Kendall Fisher's stature at only 5'3", but if you ask anyone in Indianapolis, specifically at Tinley, she can flat out go. Orsha Green misses the three at the other end of the court. Shot by Bria Goss does not go. Who touched the rebound last? It'll be out of bounds to the Catch the Stars Foundation. Get the score back on the screen for you as soon as we can. We'll keep you updated until that happens. Trailer three by Arnold, not that time. And Morris the rebound. And Morris played at both West Virginia and Mississippi State. That certainly gets your attention. And a reach-in foul here against the Catch the Stars. Fisher, the Goss sisters, Maddie McConnell, and Morris, the five on the floor for the Horizon League. Three by Fisher is good. After a somewhat quiet first half, smallest player on the floor is making some noise at half number two. But also the best way to describe Kendall. You ask her mom, and she's a woman of very few words. But she gets on the floor and is just a flat-out assassin. The large lead now grows to 17. And turnover committed by Catch the Stars. And they may be running out of answers early in this one. Down 17 with 17 minutes and change left to play. Morris, no. And Portia Green, the rebound. Portia on last year's winning team in this event. Arnold's three is good. Now need more of that if you catch the Stars 
you frankly have to catch lightning in a bottle at this point. You've got to get <laughs> some offensive rhythm going. I think that would be called volume. You just need a lot of volume right now, particularly from deep. I would go quality over quantity is what I would say. <laughs> Volumes one makes, makes is what you're looking for. But with that clock dwindling down, the quality might be as much quantity sure. as you can get up. Good step through move, pretty. That's Goss, Diera. Here and I were catching up before the game. Arnold's three does not go. The air of the rebound. Shot clock at 15, frankly, it's not been a factor in most trips. And that'll be a foul against Morris. The blackout effective <laughs> for Mariah King. That is almost a lost art these days in basketball. Runner is good for Kim Roberson. It's her second made bucket. Miss there. And rebound for catch the stars. But it's hard to make that post pass <laughs> against six foot six. Portia thought she could sneak it in there, and you might, you might not see it. If anybody could, it's Portia. <laughs> I'll give her credit on that, but sometimes physics is simply against you. Class of 05, Indiana All-Star, just accomplished so much in her time at Ball State. MAC Defensive Player of the Year, won a conference championship in her senior year. And quite frankly, Super responsible for a lot of players coming out and actually playing yep. on this women's side of the City League. She's a big part of this organization. The pull, not that time. Rebound is good. First bucket by Morris in this half. She's got nine. Frankly, the Gosses have been so good, her skills have not been as much needed on the <laughs> offensive end. Steps goal. So catch the stars, kind of tread water, which unfortunately they need a little bit more than that. Down 16 with four minutes left to play. The limit is four former professional or Division I players, but tonight it feels like Horizon League has six with the contributions that we've seen from the Goss sisters. The drive by Goss is good. Arnold tried to go block to block. Tried to find Showtime Harris, but couldn't complete the pass. Subs coming in. Williams and Lipscomb in for the Horizon League. Maddie McConnell, Kendall Fisher. I'll see Maddie coming up in the month of September. Horizon League media days for Men's Moons Hoops, 17th and 18th. Morris. And there is no stopping that if she catches that ball that close to the basket. All she has to do is turn and just toss it in. It's been a recipe for success. Trailer three is good for Roberson, her second made triple. She's got eight points. Two-time member of the All-Big Ten defensive team at IU. A lot of valuable years down at IU until Allie Patberg came through. Kimberly was the all-time leader in steals in program history. Goss misses a three, but tracks down the loose ball. Goss to Goss, a rare mid to possession where both miss a jump shot tonight. But the lead is 17. Catch the Stars have to get something of quality on this offensive possession. Barely grazed the rim. There's not been a lot of second chance looks for Catch the Stars. And it's almost like the sisters knew the other one was going to go, even though that ball did not go in. That falls 99 of 100 times. Arnold, three. 
No. Put back, no. Harris missed that one. Shot blocked. There's Roberson's <laughs> defensive skills right there. And some showboating as she turned to the crowd with the Dikembe Mutombo. And how do you back it up? By sticking a three and a timeout called by the Horizon League. So 47-33 and a first timeout we have seen called by either side in this game. It was Horizon League that called the timeout. Let's tell you more about both of these two sponsored teams in this event. The Horizon League is an NCAA Division I Athletic Conference headquartered right here in Indianapolis. Its 11 member schools are located in or near the Great Lakes region. That's the official read. Since I am fortunate enough to, let's see, be a part of six different Horizon League championship broadcasts during the course of the year, uh, the members would be Green Bay, Milwaukee, IU Indy, Purdue Fort Wayne, Detroit Mercy, Oakland University, Northern Kentucky, Wright State, Cleveland State, Youngstown State, Robert Morris. How'd I do? That's why they pay you the big bucks. Just like they said in Coming to America. <laughs> Next time I'm, I'll be on the fries. Next time you know. <laughs> well, thanks to Julie Rowe Lash, Kelly Ford, Sean Sullivan. You see her playing the game. Maddie McConnell, she's a full-time member of the Horizon League staff. They do a tremendous job to our friends at the Horizon League. And, uh, we have a relationship with them on the IFC Sports Network as well. So. Always good to see our friends from the Horizon League being involved in a community event such as this one. Really impressed with Maddie McConnell. Not just City League, but downtown Indy Inc. College football playoff Indianapolis host committee. Women's basketball extern at the NCAA assisting with IU Indy game day operations. She's just doing it all. And then paying it forward to get out on the court and play a game for a great cause that she was a part of in the creation of the women's side. And so you just love to see someone like Maddie not only thriving, but also contributing to a great cause. So Horizon League breaks the huddle. Catch the stars, we'll do the same. Point lead. It has been double digits the entire second half. It's 13 at halftime. Kind of some token full court pickup here by Catch the Stars. Steal by Bree Arnold. A much needed stop for Catch the Stars. Now let's see if they can string something together here. Drive and kick, stepping into a jump shot. Harris off the side of the backboard. I think touched last by Catch the Stars. It was. Ernstberger touched it last. Ernstberger, who played for Katie Geralds at Marion. Of course, Katie these days, the head coach at Purdue. Tremendous player in her own right, of course, was Katie. Beach Grove legend. Yep, just won a state championship there. Played the WNBA and other leagues overseas. Casually went to Marion, won some, some natties. That'd be two of those. And chucked up the deuces. <laughs> well, tipped away by Catch the Stars. Shot missed. On the turn. Basket is good for Harris. Showtime's first buck of the game. Another turnover. Chance to make it a 10-point game or closer this time down for Catch the Stars. Good run of the basket by Arnold. The assist to Portia Green. Arnold's got seven all in this half. It was a flood by Horizon League at the second part of that first half. We've seen a great response by Catch the Stars, and we've got ourselves a 10-point game. First time the offense really has gone stagnant for Horizon League 
all night. Maddie McConnell steps into that jump shot and got a three. That was kind of her signature move in this game last year, her first chance to kind of let it fly for Maddie. That's all she was working on pregame, too, as she had some friendly banter going back and forth with you, just letting them rip from deep. Arnold tries to answer, not that time. And loose ball foul is going to be called. Roberson, Michelle will check back in for Kim as they'll exchange spots on the floor. Now Morris will return for the Horizon League, bringing their size back into the game. And Williams will have a seat. Starting five now back on the floor for the Horizon League. And again, for the noise that Catch the Stars has been making, it is still a 13-point game. Fisher right by Ertzberger. Got fouled by Harris, and Kendall Fisher will shoot a pair. That was fast. She is fast. Blow by, by Ernst Berger like she wasn't even there and almost got the English to go off the glass for the M1. Here it is, right in the right hand, almost got it to go, but just got too far underneath the rim. Kendall now is seven. She made two threes in the first half. Makes them both. Scoring's been a little more balanced for both teams, frankly, as we've gotten into half number two. Foul going to be called on the block. Bria Goss picks up the whistle. It's a, it's a foul. But again, time is of the essence. And again, we will play to an Elam ending. So that clock is more of a guide at the end than seven minutes exactly on the nose left to go. I think this is the perfect format for an Elam ending event. Roberson, high arcing three does not go. And the rebound collected by the Horizon League. Fisher slicing through traffic and got it to go. What she lacks in height, she makes up for in speed and heart. She just knows how to play basketball. As Rick Carlisle likes to say, she knows the geometry of the game. Of my favorite, one of my favorite Rick Carlisle-isms of his many ones. Shot clock at 11. Arnold, shot blocked. That's like shooting against a moving skyscraper, <laughs> isn't it? She's cleaning the glass, taking things out of the air. The shot clock reset when it shouldn't have. That was the reason for the stoppage. So they're resetting the shot clock to three. So this has got to be catch a dribble or two and go. Portia Green acknowledges that. At least got it on the rim, but Nina McConnell cleans up the loose change for the Horizon League. Fisher, my goodness. Silent in the first half, not anymore. And the lead now grows to 21 for the Horizon League. And a timeout is called. Such the beautiful thing about a team sport. We see in the first half, Deara and Bria taking the reins, really leading the charge. Kendall Fisher says, you guys go ahead and take a rest in the second half and I'll take it over. And we see the lead balloon back up to 20 plus. Well, Horizon League is sponsoring one team in this event. Let's thank Tamika Catchings and the Catch the Stars Foundation, our other team sponsor. Founded 20 years ago by Hall of Fame player and person, Tamika Catchings. Catch the Stars Foundation is a nonprofit organization that provides youth with fitness, literacy, and mentoring programs that encourage them to set goals, dream bigger, and achieve more. And obviously, to make one of those players that came to Indiana to play for the Fever and never left, this became home. The foundation is 20 years in age. She's been here now for 25. And simply put, we've adopted her as a Hoosier. She is part of the fabric of Indianapolis. 
and we could not talk about women's basketball sure. in the state of Indiana without mentioning her name. Just what she did on the court, first and foremost, before all of the accolades off the court came. A member of my church, New Life Worship Center, it feels I'm almost in awe every time I see her on Sundays, not just because of who she is, but just of how humble she is and all that she's accomplished. 16 years with the Indiana Fever. Shot does not go. Her number retired by the Indiana Fever. Speaking of number retirements, talking with Amber Harris after our halftime conversation, her number being retired at Xavier in the very near future. Congratulations, Amber. A drop the mic moment for Amber just as she was exiting the interview. Hey, by the way, Xavier, Jersey retirement. Congratulations, Amber. It's a 21 point game for the Horizon League. They've been in control of this one from the very early going. Catch the Stars at a 7 2 lead. Horizon League answered, and there has not been then a return of serve, frankly, in this match from Catch the Stars. They got back to within 10. And since that time, Horizon League has answered. It was a Maddie McConnell three. That's what started the 11 point flurry that was an 11 0 run. Ball out of bounds to catch the Stars. You can tell emotions are starting to run a little hot here as it did. <laughs> We're getting close to the pay window part of this game. This Happen, is, happens this game every year. This is what you do when you're in the neighborhood with your family. You go back and forth, but you understand it's tough love at the end of the day. You and your family ain't playing for 6K, <laughs> at least in most families. That's that ante I was talking about in the beginning. Some, yes. Others, not so much. So whistle at the four minute mark. We'll see if we're gonna, and then we have now gotten to the point where we will have the target score. So tack on nine to the Horizon League total. Well, actually, they're gonna, they're gonna stop the clock first. We're gonna take a timeout before they get to that four minute threshold. Once we get to a stop that you play after that, then we'll add nine to the Horizon League score because obviously they will be leading at that point. And that is our target score to clinch the championship and the $6,000 winner-take-all prize. And from a fan standpoint, you may ask, well, why, why do that type of finish to a game? Well, the reason I feel that it's in place, we saw it at the NBA All-Star game with the celebrity game and even into the All-Star game itself, but it just allows for those guys, for those gals to get out there and compete at the end, for it to be actually entertaining for all of those people that paid all that hard-earned money to come watch them compete on a time that should be downtime for them in an all-star weekend. But what we're seeing right here for a community event, you want the community to feel engaged, and this is the best way to do it. Now we get to the stoppage in play. So Horizon League burns the timeout here, again, to potentially set the score. So that should put us to a target score of 67. Time roll through here. See exactly what the reset moment is going to be. So target score has been set. And you see Austin Taylor, the man that helped found this league, helped create it, played his high school basketball at Rossville up near Lafayette, part of our Mulberry Telecommunications kind of family of area. Clinton County. I know it's getting serious for the guys warming up in front of us. The liniment has been added. <laughs> I'm getting loose now. I'm not sure how many runs up down the floor I have at this point. I'd have a couple, but I just let it fly from three. 67. Coach Sanders sitting down in front of us getting ready for the next game. 
head coach at Beach Grove High School. Bria Goss draws the foul, and obviously you're talking about kind of the economic, I should say, entertainment value of the Elam ending. What it obviously does, it takes the strategic foul out of the game. Now, at the 19 or 21-point game, I'm not sure how big of a difference that's going to make here, but in theory, it does speed up the end of basketball games that way, which I generally think is a good thing. Keeps the show on the road, keeps everyone engaged. You don't have your one falling off, staring off into the sunset. Goss makes them both. She's got 16. She and De'Ara both 16. Morris with 16. It's Fisher in the second half with 13 that has been really kind of the coup de grace, if you will, for this Horizon League squad. Roberson, yes, off the window. Michelle gets her first bucket of the game. Kim's got 11. Michelle now with a deuce. Seven more points needed for the Horizon League. Five points needed for the Horizon League. Bria Goss with 18. Savvy vet. That's all I can say about the Goss sisters. Interchangeable. They understand how to play the game. They know what the moment is. And they've stepped up to the challenge. They might play in this league to their 50, frankly, <laughs> at this point. They're not close to that, by the way, folks. Shot is up and no good. Goss the rebound, and in theory, you're potentially two buckets away for the Horizon League. Pavel by Bria. Looking for a little recovery. Shot clock and a dozen. The blow by and foul. So two free throws for the Aragon. Naturally, you are champs in 2021. Jay Gold's our champs in 2022. Last year's champs, the law office of Carmen Malone. And that was Portia Green's team last year. Sometimes you do research, sometimes you simply read the trophy that is <laughs> right next to you with an assist from Jared. As an offensive lineman, he's always looking to make the talent look better, so thank you. I, pr I appreciate that. I'm just here as the safety net. And you're a very intelligent safety net at that. My partner, former National Football Foundation Scholar Athlete Award winner, his days at Cathedral High School. Seventeen for Diarra, and make it eighteen, and now three points away from both the championship and the payday. Hey, we gonna shut. I'm gonna shut this out right here. When you come back in, we do it. No more inside outside. On the drive, King, shot blocked. We will stick with this broadcast until the championship trophy presentation name goes up on the tournament bracket for the Queens of the Court. And our men's game is slated for an 8 o'clock start. Shot clock at 5. Has to go up from Portia Green, and it does, and it's a 3. But it would take something of the miraculous at this point. Three points to be scored by the Horizon League. 25 for catch the star. Turnover by the Horizon League. Green again. Good again. Porsche obviously can still play too. <laughs> He's got 17. She knows how to get it done. Timeout called by the Horizon League. Just going to make sure everybody is on the same page for the Horizon League. Coming up in our men's game, it is Mambo's Cheese Steak Grill, who won last year's event against a team sponsored by Prudential. And they, as compared to the other three teams in the league, undefeated that made the championship game. Darius Adams, Marcus Teague, John Hart, Leon Tillman. Amongst the key name for Mambos, for Prudential, A.J. Lott, current UND player from Marion Knight, Brody Whitaker. Tyree Johnson, who played at North Central and Marion University on that Prudential squad as well. A good friend of mine, Zach Owens, we trained together with Justin Ochoa. I'm excited to see Zach coming off a great season playing overseas, seeing what he has in store 
in tonight's contest. Yeah, Zach, part of the 2017 3A champs at Crispus Attucks. Chris Hawkins' first year at Attucks. Thrilled that we're heading to Attucks a couple of times this year for basketball on ISC and My Indy TV. We'll be there for Lawrence North on November 30th and right back there for North Central three days later on December the 3rd. Of course, Attucks featuring Desmond Briscoe, one of the top players in the state this coming season. We got one too many players on the floor. <laughs> she will be City League eligible in about 14 years. There we go. She had to make the grand entrance. That could be the only thing that could slow the Horizon League down at this point. For the win, no. And still a lot of room to work with for the Horizon League. It's not over till it's over. Shot clock at 10. Three Arnold for three, got it. Arnold now with 10, she becomes the third player for catch the stars in double figures. Also part of those state championship teams with the Golf Sisters. It doesn't have to be a three. But a three would end it. Fisher, a reach in foul. And free throws, I think, attached to that. So again, it won't end here, but this will get Horizon League closer to the finish line. It's all about how the game ends. All of the fans, I'm sure you can hear on the broadcast, everyone incredulously asking the referees, could you please just allow the game to go on some more? We want to see some more three-pointers. We want to see some more game action. That just speaks to the energy and the electricity going on in this building. A lot of volunteer officials at events such Always. as this. Shot is up and good. That is not exclusive to the no. City League. No. <laughs> it's everywhere. Shot is up and good. So one point away. Fisher's now got 15. 66-48. So Portia Green, no. Fight for the loose ball. And out of bounds to Horizon League. So, any basket here, frankly, a free throw. Wins it for the Horizon League. Should I start preparing myself for the brigade that'll come over for the trophy as soon as this thing goes final? I think you're safe where you are right now. I think your pass protection skills for playing in the <laughs> UFL, you'll be just fine. My partner played for the Memphis Showboats this past season. I learned this season, you win some and you lose some. And sometimes you lose a lot more than you win. <laughs> Shot clock at seven. Green missed it. Now a chance run out here for the Horizon League. Fisher's runner. She got fouled and now has to make one of two free throws, and that's that. It was the Goss show in the first half. Frankly, it has been Kendall Fisher's show at half number two. For time at Tinley, it'd be a first quarter. First quarter of a game. She'd get a rebound. She'd get an assist but she would always impact the game. And even though she's well past her days at Tinley, ices the game here, and her impact was felt throughout the entirety of that second half. Will not need the second free throw. The Horizon League team.
wins the $6,000 first place prize, and they are your City League queens of the court for 2024. Both Bree and De'Ara Goss each score 18 points. Yamaya Morris scores 16. Kendall Fisher, 16. Maddie McConnell, three points. Victoria Lipscomb. Nairi Williams played but did not score. Four catch the stars. Portia Green, 17. Kim Roberson, 11. Brianna Arnold with 10. The ladder is being put into position to put the Horizon League logo in the champion spot in the women's bracket. Well, fittingly, on a year where the Horizon League saw a men's team knock off Kentucky in the NCAA tournament. I'm not sure if this accomplishment is on par with that, but bragging rights in the office as the Horizon League will claim the championship and will claim the check. And truly in dominating fashion by Horizon League from start to finish, the Goss sisters, then it was Kendall Fisher in that second half. Their defense, I think, is what stuck out to me early on, just being suffocating, extending it past the three-point line. It was well put together for a City League tournament that sometimes gets pushed to the back on the back burner. Like, oh, I'm not going to take that that serious. But we saw some one-two by the Horizon League, and that is why they are victorious. A trophy awaits at the middle of the court. First things first. Logo will be. Slap the top of championship bracket. By the way, double-double for Moore as she finished with 10 rebounds. We'll have the men's championship coming up at 8 o'clock. Trophy presentation to follow. Men's players are already starting to get loose for their championship game. We had to secure one more Horizon League logo. That has been done. And Kendall Fisher will get the honor. I'm not sure she's tall enough to reach that spot, to be honest with you. She got it just fine. It may not stick on there. <laughs> Only thing that went wrong for the Horizon League the entire night. You got to reapply the Velcro to keep it on there. Well, I think the folks that follow this league on a regular basis, I think we're a little bit surprised that, that this one was as lopsided as it was. Well, I think at the end of the day, any time anytime you see, I mean, one of the things that the City League has pointed out, when you think about New York City, Rucker Park, when you think about Washington, D.C., the Goodman League, when you think about L.A. and Cali, you think about the Drew League, and even some of what uh, Jamal Crawford is doing up in the Pacific Northwest. Like, although teams have loaded stars and guys that have accomplished a lot of things and gals that have accomplished so many great things, the expectation when you come into the neighborhood is that you make it competitive. And I think that's what everyone wanted to see, but sometimes things get out of hand, especially when you have the Goss sisters and Kendall Fisher on your team. Championship trophy has been presented to the Horizon League. Congratulations, ladies. You also get the $6,000 first place cash prize. We will give our ISC Sports Network crew a breather. We're back in approximately 20 minutes for the men's championship game. But the Queens of the Court in the City League for 2024, the Horizon League, led by the Goss sisters. They controlled this game really from the opening couple of minutes on. They went at 67-48. Thanks for joining us. We're back at 8 o'clock. We're watching the City League Women's Championship right here on the ISC Sports Network.